Hey guys, welcome back. Steve here with Six Star Automotive. Today I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to try out a really technical video. So you may not follow along. If you don't really care about this stuff, then I guess you can move on to the next one. Uh, but this one's probably more for the technicians. But something that I'm, I'm very surprised is so uh, widely unknown and unused in our industry with it being so important. So before we get started, please hit the like button, subscribe, and join me as we talk about voltage drop. You've had a car come in, you've got a code, you've got a problem, you've done some checks, you've, you suspect a bad component, you test for power and ground, you got power and ground, you replace the component, and they're still not fixed. So I'm gonna tell you why that happens. So one of the things I learned very early on from my mentor is that diagnostic flow charts are not the way to effectively fix cars. In order to be a highly effective technician, one who is productive and efficient, you really need to understand how systems work and then come up with your own diagnostic flowchart based on all the data that you have in order to come up with the tests that are suitable for your specific situation. In order to do that, you need to be able to master wiring diagrams. One thing that's really nice is all data. If you haven't used them, you need to be using all data. All data takes all the factory diagrams of all the cars that they support and they convert the diagrams into ones that are all their style or their format. So one of the things that's really great about all data's wiring diagrams is that they're generally laid out all the same way. You're gonna have powers in the top, grounds in the bottom, and then the diagram in the middle. All the components can kind of be wherever they're gonna be in order to make it make sense, but generally speaking, that's the flow. So the next thing is you really need to understand what all of the symbols and keys mean. So I'm gonna, not gonna go over that in this video. If you guys want a video on how to understand wiring diagrams, leave me a comment and I'll go over that one next. So you also need to have a really solid understanding of Ohm's law. Let's have a quick refresher. Ohm's law states that voltage equals amperage times resistance. It also works any other way in that circle. So amperage times resistance equals voltage, or voltage divided by resistance equals amperage, or voltage divided by amperage equals resistance, whatever. But understanding the correlation behind, between all those three is key to understanding voltage drop. So what is voltage drop? Well, a quick definition of voltage drop is the loss of voltage as current flows through a circuit. So just from that definition, you have to test voltage drop with current flowing. You cannot test it without current flowing. So that's where this tool comes in that I'm gonna show you in a minute. So let's go back to Ohm's law for just a second. Voltage, current, resistance. W what do these even mean? So if the best way to analogize, the best analogy I can come up with is, is like a garden hose. So if you have a garden hose and it's turned off, you have no voltage, you have no pressure, you have no potential. So you take the garden hose and you turn it on. If you take that garden hose and you kink it, that pressure that builds up on the other side of the kink is going to be your voltage. The voltage is the electrical pressure or the electrical potential that's inside of a circuit. That kink is the resistance. So you still have one more thing though, and that's the current. So what is the current? Well, the last obvious thing would be the flow of the water. So if you undo that kink, you remove the resistance from the circuit and current can then flow. So the same thing works the opposite direction. If you have a hose that's flowing, you got it pouring out the side, you slowly kink the hose, you'll notice that the pressure will start to build up higher on the other side and the flow will start to gradually reduce. So instead of just all or nothing, you can kind of have varying flow and that really is where voltage drop comes in. So the best way to demonstrate voltage drop is to take a nozzle and connect it to the end of the hose. The nozzle is going to be the resistance, it's going to shut it off. So at that point if you squeeze the nozzle you're now removing the resistance and you're spraying the water allowing the current to flow. But if you take the hose and you kink it, not all the way, but if you kink it about 90% of the way, it's still going to allow pressure to go past it when that nozzle is closed and the pressure will still build up, so you're still gonna have voltage at the end of the circuit. But if you load the circuit, if you release resistance and allow the current to flow, what's gonna happen? It's gonna go It's all the pressure that's built up on this side of the hose is gonna release instantly, and then you're not gonna have any flow. It's gonna go spray nothing, and then it's gonna dribble. And then it's the pressure is going to build up again, and you'll get 12 volts over here again. And then you load it, and poof, it can't handle the resistance. The current can't get through because of the high resistance, and that is the voltage drop. And this is why resistance testing alone will not help you. If you look at wires and you take an automotive wire apart, it's not just one wire, it's multiple 
multiple strands of wires all put together inside of an insulator. So if you open up that insulator and you have all the wires connected like this, and then you break all of them except for one wire, the other ones are just kind of flopping in the breeze and they're not doing anything. Then you connect one side to the battery and the other side to the power of whatever you're gonna light bulb, whatever it is, right? If you test for power on this side, you're going to get 12 volts because the pressure is able to build up all the way to the end because there still is a connection no matter how small. But if you turn the power on and you supply a ground path to the other side of that light bulb, the voltage is going to drop here, the voltage that's at the bulb is not going to stay there because the current inside of that circuit is determined by the resistance based on Ohm's law. So because we have such a small amount of connection through here, a high amount of resistance, the voltage is going to drop across the resistance, create heat, and then there's not going to be any voltage down at the end in order to run that bulb or whatever it is on that side. That's why resistance testing is no good. So if you try and do continuity testing, then you're going to go beep on both sides because it is technically still connected, but it's never going to run a load. So what tools are needed to do this properly? I've got your answer. So this right here is really the best answer that I can find for you. There's other ways of doing it, but these things are not that expensive. These are called Load Pro Test Leads. These things, these are the ticket. They take the place of your normal test leads. So you take your multimeter and you hook it up like you would right here and you don't have to have your regular test leads. These are now your test leads. So you can use these for anything. It's big, chunky, kind of weird looking things. So most of the time I don't use these, but what it does, what the magic is, is this little red button right here. So what it allows you to do is put a load onto a circuit and test for that drop. So I use these mostly to test powers and grounds for computer modules. One thing that you wanna be absolutely certain of if you're gonna recommend a PCM, an ECM, a DCM, a B, whatever, any kind of control module is that it has to have good power and good ground to function. I mean, if it, if it doesn't have that, then how are you gonna blame it for not doing its job? Uh, really what you're trying to do at that point is you're going to remove the connector from the, from the circuit, from the module, from the light bulb, whatever, and you're going to test for power there with a known good ground Right, you have to have a known good ground. So you're gonna have, usually the best thing to do, go to the battery, come back, use your, your pigtail on the end of your power probe to as your ground. So you have an absolutely known good ground. And then test the power side and load it. And it's, so you'll, say you'll get 12.6, whatever, if it's running 13 some volts, and then you load it down and you should be looking for, uh, you know, generally no more than half a volt. I mean, that's usually kind of excessive, but if you're getting any more than 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 volts, then you've, and, and you'll, you'll know, I mean, it'll either be around a half a volt or like four volts. So it's either good or it's bad. And don't neglect the ground side. You can do the same thing, except you have to have a good known power source and then load the ground side. It's the same thing in the opposite direction. So you can use your power probe, get one of those master switches that allows you to flick it onto the power side, use your ground on the ground path of that circuit, and you can test the ground side as well. Or, like what they talk about in here, you just go to the circuit itself. The issue at that point is that you don't know if the power is the fault or the ground is the fault. So, I mean, it's a good way to quickly test, but if you do have a fault, you kind of have to do it the way that I told you in the first place. So, eh, I always do it that way first. So let's recap, Ohm's law, voltage divided by current equals resistance. And any other way, resistance times current equals voltage. Wiring diagrams, learn your wiring diagrams. Take some time on your time off, just grab your own car, come up with a circuit and do some, just fart around with it. Don't really expect to do all your training on the job. You really want to take some of your own time and, and study. The best thing that I can tell any technician is what I would do for myself is that you're going to find something during the day that you know that you're struggling with. Be honest with yourself. Find that something that you're struggling with, write it down. And then when you go home, do some homework on that one thing or two things or whatever it ends up being. And then you do that every day. Remember, like 1% every day. If you just get better every single day, you're going to be unstoppable. I forgot to incorporate this, but check it out. Voltage drop. You're gonna find power at the end of the circuit, but it's not gonna work. It'll still connect. It'll still allow voltage to go through, but it will not allow a load. So this is a real world example of what we're talking about. So do your testing, listen to Scanner Danner, don't be a parts changer. So thanks for watching, I hope it helped you guys out. If you have any questions, you know where to put them. If you have any requests for other videos, you know where to put them. And everybody else, remember, you can always come by to experience the six star difference for yourself.